In this video, I will share with you 10 important tips that I wish I knew when I first started playing the game so many months ago. There will be essential information that everyone can benefit from, so this isn't your typical newbie only guide. These types of videos typically have a duration of at least 30 minutes on YouTube, but we all know that that is complete low effort creator bullshit content, and your time is important, so I'll summarize everything into easily digestible chunks. You can also find the topics in the timestamps below. But before moving into the meat and potatoes of the video, if you find this video helpful, do consider checking out the other guides I have on my channel as well. If you're feeling generous, feel free hit the subscribe button and leave a comment as that really helps me out a lot. Now, let's move on. We start off with the most fundamental setting, the HUD layout of your screen. This is something that isn't discussed a lot, but there is one big hack to make your gameplay 10 times more pleasant. Go to the chat and type slash edit on. This enables the mobility of most objects on your screen. Next, walk to any artisanal station like the anvil and readjust both the attack and interact buttons such that they are stacked on top of each other. These two buttons should also align with the smith button. This format allows you to loot materials, attack enemies, and craft or smith items with a touch of one single location. This was truly a godsend discovery I made and it changed everything for me, especially playing on blue stacks. When you're done, just type slash edit off and if you made a mistake, you can also reset everything with slash HUD reset. Now, since free trading exists in this game, there'll be people trying to make bank from newbies and getting scammed is a common mistake newbies will make. When thinking of making a deal with someone but you aren't sure of the item price, never ever consult the seller nor buyer on their offer. This is the best way for them to figure out if you're an easy target for a good deal. Instead, here are two ways you can avoid getting scammed. The first approach is to simply ask other players in the global chat. There are many helpful players around and someone is bound to tell you exactly what the current market prices are. The second and better approach is to simply join the Curse of Arrows Discord server and search for the item in Trades and Prices channel. The link can be found in descriptions below or by simply typing slash Discord in the in-game chat. Congrats! There is now one less retard in the game. Now, no beginner guide will be complete without a brief overview of how to earn gold fast. While I have an entire LBH short video dedicated to this topic, here is literally the best place for a newbie to farm gold. This is a nature dungeon just north of spawn and these seedlings are stupidly profitable. Any half-baked fire ore with access to their abusive father's mobile device will be able to farm upwards of 24 million gold per hour looting from these Oompa Loompas. The magic essences, books and nature relics are worth something to other players and even the anti-poison serum fetches a decent 1.5 thousand gold from the merchant. While the baby seedlings in the nature dungeon have a similar loot table, they however don't drop these items in nearly the same quantity so avoid them at all costs. You might also get lucky and obtain a pet CD this way which is the strongest pet in the game on par with the tiny Derek's as he deals ranged magical damage and has a small AoE attack as well. But speaking of pets, let's talk about our next beginner tip. Now there are four kinds of pets in this game. There are melee damage pets, magic damage pets, gathering pets, and artisanal pets. Combat pets can be obtained by killing a wide variety of monsters or by opening event boxes. These pets assist the player by attacking enemies. Gathering pets are obtainable by chance from doing their respective gathering skills such as woodpecker from woodcutting. These pets increase all of your harvesting efficacies which means the woodpecker will improve your odds at woodcutting, mining, and even fishing. So so you're not strictly limited to just wood cutting. Artisanal pets are obtainable by chance by doing their respective artisanal skills such as woody from crafting. These pets give all of your artisanal skill attempts a chance at doubling your output for free and just like the gathering pets will benefit all of your artisanal skills. All of your pets gain levels from doing their respective jobs and the effects improve with their levels so that means you should only focus on one combat pet which is CD and only one gathering pet and only one artisanal pet. But you might also be wondering how can I find specific ores and logs? Now if you're looking for certain ores and logs you can bring up the world map to get a visual representation of where the nodes are. For example, you can find chestnut trees over here by the lake and olive trees all the way in the mushroom owls. You can also find mithen ores in the abandoned mines and sandstone in the magnetite scarab pit. Play around with the map as it is extremely important to be familiar with all of these locations. Now next tip, it might also be tempting to kill bosses thinking that you're either going to get good shit from them or have insane profits rolling in. But the truth is, not only are you not going to get any good shit nor have any profits at all, chances are you will be wasting a lot of time and get tilted when someone comes along to snag away your spot. Bossing in this game is mostly free for all and if you aren't geared to a competitive level, you will likely lose out to someone with a bigger dick. I mean bigger power. Not only does your low damage mean taking a freaking long time to kill anything, but it also means that stronger players will constantly swoop in to steal all of your rewards. So just focus on leveling and getting good and come back again when you are kitted up. Now, just like gold, this guy will also be incomplete without me telling you where is the best place to farm EXP. Even though the task bot affords you free additional EXP, chances are they will require you to kill absolutely the dumbest shit that will waste your time. Avoid it at all costs. The best 6 mobs to farm EXP are the Cactus Soldiers, Anubi, Corrupted Venomlings, Tormented Venomlings, Rageful Venomlings, and Disdained Venomlings. However, the best by far is the Disdained Venomling, and there are no close competitors at all. Just ensure that you are the level 79 spawn set equipped and you should have no issues handling them. But this also leads me to the next beginner tip. Now to further enhance all forms of EXP, be it melee, magic, woodcutting, fishing, tailoring, or smithing, you should consider waiting for an active world boost. You know this boost is active if you have a buff on you shaped like a well. Now with the world boost, anything you do will give you 50% more EXP, and this is 
activated by other players with too much cash to know what to do with, but that is not something you need to worry about. However, my personal opinion is to stop killing mobs and to use this time to work on artisanal skills instead, which are currently smithing, tailoring, cooking, and crafting. But keeping to the topic of EXP, let's discuss another way to speed up your EXP gains in the next beginner tip. So this is where most players screw up and that is to use their wishes too early or to use it incorrectly. These wishes come from three main ways. The first way is to obtain them from a daily login gift. The second way is by opening your melee or magic gift boxes. And the third is by pay to I mean, there are only two ways to get wishes. These wishes will give you a random EXP booster which come in the form of blue crystals or purple stars of varying qualities from small to medium to large and then huge. Just like my day. The blue crystals give you instant EXP for a selected skill while the purple stars give you a 100% bonus EXP for a selected skill up to the bonus EXP limit of the EXP star. But here's where the problem is. Most newbies don't know that the higher a skill level, the higher the EXP you get from these boosters. This means it's extremely important to save these wishes and EXP boosters for when your skill level is higher, not when your skill levels are low. As a general rule of thumb, I recommend only using these EXP boosters on skills that are at least level 80 and to never use it on skills that generate easy EXP like melee, magic, wood cutting, and mining. Take my word for it, you will not regret it. And now for the final tip, sell all of your event loot boxes as early as possible. This game releases events on a seasonal basis and they come with event loot boxes, equipment, and cosmetics. It is always the smarter choice to sell the event loot boxes early on and use that money to buy the event equipment you're looking for. I have made another video of me opening more than a billion gold worth of event loot boxes and that was a great representation of why opening these boxes are a complete waste of gold. If I had sold those boxes instead, I would have easily gotten a return of more than 10 times my initial cost. And I wasn't unlucky in that video either. The drop rates in this game tend to be very cruel. So this is an extremely important tip I wish I knew at the start. Now that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more Curse of Arrows content. Now with that said, this has been Derek Free to Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.